Hi. Hey, welcome to my studio. It's Dina Tollefson. For those of you who had tried to join um, the last time I was, um, I tried setting it up and scheduling it and I had a technical difficulty. So this is the new stream. Here's the official stream and welcome and I'm so glad that you're here today. So today's gonna be a great one. I'm gonna be painting trees and exploring the differences between acrylic, oil, and watercolor when using, uh, when painting a tree. Um, how are they different and how are they the same? So let me just, uh, I'm gonna just pop over here to the, um, set up the live stream. Um, there we go, set up the live stream chat so I can see what you guys are doing. And I'm gonna mute that, and sorry about that, let me mute it. Okay, there we go. All right, it's kind of a crazy day today. All right, so we're gonna start first with the acrylic. And let's talk about these brushes. So we have acrylic brushes, we have oil brushes, and we have watercolor brushes. You might be wondering what's uh, the difference between them. Um, you Technically, you can really use any kind of brush for any painting, but I prefer to use the Watercolor brushes, these are watercolor brushes. This is um, Squirrel and a uh, synthetic blend, and this brand is um, Black Velvet Silver. And um, I, I thank the little squirrel that died doing this. And hey, he, uh, oh, look, it's Alexius. Um, and also Bill is here, and thank you guys for joining. And oh, Zargo Hunter is here, and I'm so glad you guys are have joined. So, um, this is a, a set of uh, some acrylic brushes that I use, and these are um, Taquan, American Painter, and Blick Master Stroke. This is a filbert type, and this is a flat wash type. All right, and then we have over here, these are bristle brushes. So these are brushes that I like to use for oil painting. And these are some um, also Blick Master Stroke uh, brushes, but what's nice about these is these have a lot of spring in them and they're kind of a hard brush. So if you look at the differences, oil paint is very thick and viscous and uh, acrylic paint is very soft and you use a soft brush. And the softest brush of all that um, one would use is a watercolor brush. And so, um, so we've got these uh, different types of brushes. And then looking at the paint, Let's get some paint going here and we can get started. Oh, and yeah, and you know, Zargo, I had a, I had kind of a, of a problem. This is, I don't normally do live streams where I schedule it, and this is my first time trying to schedule one, and so I got it to first show with the wrong date, then I got it to show with the correct date and, then, and time, and then when it got to be the actual time, then um, I couldn't actually get the thing to work. So I'll have to figure that out in the meantime. Um, I appreciate everyone's patience. So yeah, it's kind of a deal. Yeah, it is. Oh, and look, and Helen Schaefer is here. And oh, Davey is here too, and Alexius from um, Huijin Comic Art. I appreciate you guys all being here today. It's wonderful. So we've got our oil, or our acrylic set up here, and I've got some yellow. So we've got primary yellow, and we have phthalo blue red shade. We've got Mars Black here, and we have Dioxazine Purple. And so I'm going to uh, paint our tree with just these four colors. And I love to do a paint mixing thing. That's like, for me, that's a lot of the fun. Um, so let's make a good color here. And thank you, Alexius. So let's start with the yellow here. And oh, there's the phone. Let's turn that off. There, okay. Um, so here's the yellow. Let's get a little puddle of that started over here. We'll just wipe off the extra here. And then, to make our different colors for the tree, um, I'm thinking about this idea. Oh, and Moody is here. Good morning and good afternoon, Moody. Um, I wanna think about the idea of having sunlight coming from this direction of the, of the sky onto our tree. And um, so starting with some yellow, if we add just a tiny little bitty bit of black, we can make up a nice dark tree color. So let's get that mixed first. Okay, that's a nice color for branches. 
And then let's add some of this over to the yellow and make a very light color, and that's gonna be the branches in the light. And so, oh, hey, Daddy, that's my father, Dietrich Schaefer, um, has joined. Thank you for being here. Thank you to everyone for being here. And also, if I, um, if I didn't, if I missed, if you said something on the chat and I didn't catch it, I apologize. It's my intention to respond. And if I didn't, it wasn't an oversight. It was just that I, I didn't see what you wrote because I was looking at the painting or looking at the, the paint puddles here. Let's get a little bit more of our primary yellow. This is um, heavy bodied um, acrylic from Golden. I love the Golden acrylics. I don't know if you guys have a favorite brand. Put your uh, favorite brand in the chat if you have a favorite brand of acrylics. Oh, well, Moody, thank you. You are so kind, Moody. I appreciate you. Let's get a little bucket of water here so I can dip the palette knife into the water and get that uh, wiped off. Now let's go ahead and make up another green. Let's make up a green that could be including some blue. So I like if we can have, you know, sometimes a person might want to paint a tree with just only for example, uh, one color of green. I really love to add a whole bunch of different colors. I think it makes it much more interesting for the tree. And then also, let's make a trunk color. So the purple here, this dioxazine purple, plus the yellow can make a really nice color for the trunk. And you might wonder, why are you using purple and yellow together to make a trunk color? It's kind of a, oh, you like golden too? Zargo, yes. And oh, hey, Lizzie, hi, welcome. Um, so you might wonder, why are you using purple to make a tree color, a tree trunk color? Well, this is actually a really nice neutral color. I don't know if you can see that. But this, um, this purple, purple you make with uh, red and blue, and then yellow. So you've got purple, red, or uh, red, blue, and yellow all together make a wonderful neutral color. So um, let's also add a little bit of yellow to that mixture. And then this can be the trunk in the sunlight. Let's do that. All right, so now that we have our different colors mixed up, let's go ahead and grab the brush. So where did I put my little brush here? We'll get him going. Okay, so let's get, I'm gonna use um, of these uh, for the acrylic painting, and again, you can use these brushes for watercolor. You can also use them for oil. I like to keep my brushes, the ever, whatever type I'm using, try and keep them separate, um, so, so that the, if you, for example, oil paint doesn't get in and get it all kind of cruddy in there and then get stuck and get kind of gross. Um, it's kind of nice to just keep them separate. So let's start here and uh, get our trunk going. And we'll just get this started over here. And let's put a little bit of indication up here that we have some branches. Just dipping this in the water. What's nice about acrylics is you can really do a lot of layering, as much layering as you like. Let's add the dark side of the stem and extend that into the earth a little bit. There we go. Okay, now, when we think about conifers, so when you have a conifer, and um, I did not know this, I, I went and actually looked up uh, conifers, I always thought that evergreen and conifer are the exact same thing, and it turns out that conifer and evergreen are actually, uh, conifers are a type of evergreen but not all evergreens are conifers. So if you think about um, these conifers, they're, they have like a little growth up at the top, and then they have like, they start out, they kind of start out like people's bodies do, where at the, at the very top and at the beginning, um, they're like perky, and <laughs> then as you age, they, go, <laughs> they get a little droopier. That's just kind of the way it goes. So let's kind of get our branches here um, in sunlight, but notice that we're drooping as we're aging here. 
All right, so let's rinse this, uh, get the water rinsed. And then now that we have a little bit of the idea of the sunlight coming in, now we can go in with the other color here. And what I'm gonna do is just go in and kind of tease a little bit, trying to leave a little bit of space every, every so often. And conifers are what it means. It's actually from the Latin. And uh, a conifer uh, literally means, from the Latin, um, one who bears a cone. And uh, so that's what makes something a conifer. And there are some things that I was kind of surprised to find out that they were conifers, like uh, yew bushes, for example, are conifers. And not every conifer keeps all of its leaves. Some conifers lose their leaves over time, over the, you know, during the, during the year. They'll actually lose their, their leaves. All right, so what I'm trying to do is just get this idea of the idea of the branches coming down. But now that we have this, let's go in and put in some darks because it looks kind of light and wimpy right now. But let's, uh, let's put in some, some of these dark colors. So if we just go in and tease our brush over here, we can just build up this layer, this idea of some darks. So right down at the bottom of our tree, let's go in and put in some heavy indications down here. And the one thing that you'll notice when you're working in acrylics is that um, you can let the layers dry in between and they'll dry pretty quickly and uh, acrylic will dry with a flexible, they call it like a flexible, um, like a flexible film when it's done. Now let's go in and put a little bit more of our trunk in. Just get that trunk going. And the other thing with acrylics is that um, I'm using it with just very little water what you can do with your acrylics is you can make them actually pretty, um, pretty soft and liquidy. Uh, you wanna be careful that you don't add too much water to your acrylic because what can happen is you can get, um, so it won't adhere. So if you wanted to make it super, super washy and super wet, the way to handle that is to go in and do that with a, um, go in and do that with adding a medium to your to your work. So I'm gonna switch over to this flat brush here. Hey, Artsy, and welcome, and I'm so glad that you're here. Oh, and Lizzie's asking, art challenges in the future. Yes, Lizzie, um, in 2023, we're gonna be back doing the art challenges. So absolutely. Okay, so I'm just taking this purple, the dioxazine purple, and putting this down here as well. So, you know, when you're making your own trees, you can kind of decide what colors you want to use. I'm one of those people where um, I like to add colors that aren't maybe necessarily found in nature, <laughs> but just kind of, um, it's just, I kind of enjoy adding in other colors and, um, that's just, that's just me. So you might be like, okay, why is there purple in that tree? And I just, uh, just cause it feels like it kind of expresses the tree. It feels like it kind of, um, I guess my feeling about the tree, I can, uh, can be expressed that way. So now that we have this, these colors in here, let's go now and add a little highlight down here by the by the trunk. And let's just add a little bit of water, make just a loose thing over here, and then let's just have a little bit of land, or the area where the tree is now coming in here with the land. And that again is a nice, easy thing about acrylics is you can go in and 
kind of make them as loose or as tight as you want. Now with the same brush, the same flat brush, let's go in and add in the idea of maybe having a little bit of foliage down here. So we can put in just kind of some spiky things. And we can also get this, um, oops, and I got a little bit of paint where I didn't want it. So let's see if we can just get that wiped off. And worst case, we can't get it off. And you can always put a little bit of white over the top. That's kind of a trick. Let's get that wiped off. Yeah, there it's coming off. Okay. All right, so now, and Artsy, you're saying you like oils the best because it takes time and the acrylic dries quickly. Yeah, and you know, Artsy, what one trick that I do is I use these, uh, this, this is a uh, Winsor & Newton acrylics palette, and I also like the Masterson Stay Wet palettes because they make it so you don't have to sit there and mist your acrylics. It just makes it so that it will just kind of dry nicely. Um, but now if we think also about the idea of a conifer, they have like this, these little needles everywhere. So I'm just gonna kinda go in here and just get a little bit of the feeling and let's use the flat brush for that. Let's just go in and tease up the paint a little bit where it's not quite dry and just kind of get a little feeling of brushiness or like um, needles. And again, it's one of these things like on a painting, you can decide how far you want to take it from just loose and expressive, or if you want to go and, you know, go really far with it and add a lot of detail. It's Really, I think that's one thing for me that I really enjoy is just this idea that you can really go and make it as simple as you want or as complicated as you want. So now let's go in with some of this Thalo Blue Red Shade. And again, just my tree has got blue in it and, um, and it likes to be blue. <laughs> but it's like, again, if you don't like to do those many colors, you can do whatever colors you like since it's your tree. We'll just get a few more spikies on there. Okay, so that's that's the acrylic approach. Now let's switch over to oil. So let me get my I'm gonna get a new thing of a new bucket of water, and I'm gonna put my let's get a new set here. So one thing about oil painting is that I think oil paint is probably my favorite, I guess artsy like you, where it's, it's like your favorite to do. Um, and yeah, the conifers are pretty now, Bill, this time of year with the snow on it. We're in the middle of a really big snowstorm. We have this conifer um, in our backyard and it's, I think, my favorite tree in our yard. And it is um, a Nico blue spruce. And usually nobody is going to eat spruce trees, but we have a beaver in the neighborhood. So we used to have granddad beaver, but now we've got some relative of granddad. And this beaver has gone and tried to eat the bottom of our Nico blue spruce, which was terrible. And so, um, so Bill, my husband Bill, my wonderful husband Bill, who's on the chat by the way, um, he put in a, he had to put up some chicken wire to keep the, to keep that um, beaver out of the way. But nevertheless, the beaver did end up enjoying some of the branches of our conifers, sadly. So now I'm going in with these, let's talk about, so um, when we had the acrylic paint and we had a phthalo blue red shade, and I use gloves when I'm uh, working with uh, uh, oil paint because it tends to get whatever, even though I try to be really clean with it, for whatever reason, my, my containers of paint always get a little bit of oil on them. Oh, and Elf is here. Hi, Elf. So good to see you. Thank you for joining. Um, so, and thank you. Oh, and thank you very, very much, you guys. 
Um, so we're using a phthalo blue red shade in acrylic. And then here's the analog of that. This is a Winsor & Newton Artisan water mixable color, uh, also a phthalo blue red shade. Um, so this water mixable color, most artists that I know have switched from, I'll call it standard oil color to the water mixable. What's so wonderful about water mixable color is it's soap and water cleanup. And that makes it super, super, um, you know, super, super nice. So my favorite art material, um, oh my gosh. Well, I think it changes, Artsy, I think it changes uh, week to week, but I, I love oils, I love acrylics, I love it all. And I think I got that from my mother, Helen Schaefer, who is, the, who is an art junkie, <laughs> art supply junkie. Um, okay, so dioxazine purple is the other color that we're using. And that same, we had that same color also in the acrylic. But I want you to look at how dark these colors come out of the tube. That's a difference between um, oil and acrylic, is that the acrylic paint, when it came out, let me grab that acrylic paint again. Do you look at the consistency of how that comes out of the tube? Look at how soft and um, almost like raspberry jam it comes out it looks kind of almost delicious of course you don't want to eat it but then um the, when the paint comes out of the tube um, for the water mixable oil it depends on the color some colors tend to have more oil than others some brands tend to have more oil if you use cobra for example brand i use that brand also it's very unctuous it has a lot of oil if you ever get too much oil uh, and you don't want it, then you can always dab that or like put the put the clump of it onto a paper towel and then let that soak away so that you have the amount of oil that you want. But look at this. This looks a little bit like the consistency of toothpaste or maybe peanut butter or Nutella that was sitting out too long, something like that. Um, so the, the texture, so uh, the texture is a lot thicker. So when, when you work with oil, you want to compensate for that. If you try and use a super soft brush um, with oil, you can, but um, it's, it tends to be that a person gets a little better result if you use like a really stiff bristle brush, like this really stiff brush here. So, uh, so the colors, and then we also have Mars Black here, or actually this is Ivory Black. And then the other color is lemon yellow. So we had a primary yellow here, but these yellows are pretty compatible. And then Mars black, and then we've got an ivory black. All right, so let's start and go ahead and mix up some colors also uh, for our trees. So let's start with the yellow. Let's make uh, just a tiny bit of black and make up a nice color here for the tree when it is in the sunlight. Let's take our purple and mix up with that yellow. And that can be, we'll add a little more yellow. And that can be our stem or our trunk um, in shadow. A little bit more. The purple, this diaxazine purple is a really strong tinter. And so you really have to add, I'm gonna have to add more yellow here. Um, it's like a little bit of purple goes a really long way. Uh, in this diaxazine purple, and this particular lemon yellow is a weak tinter, meaning that um, it's more transparent, and so when you are mixing it, it is harder to, I guess, harder to get together. Let's add a little of this yellow here, and we'll put just a small amount of the purple that we just mixed up, and that can be our trunk in the sunlight like so, there we go. Okay, and now, now let's make up some greens for the tree. Let's add a little bit of our phthalo blue red shade. Nutella that sat out too long. Yeah, there, I know. I tell you, um, my Nutella doesn't sit out too long, um, but it would be if it's stored in a cold and I think, I want to say, Zargo, you live in, is it like Sweden or Denmark or something, Norway? You live somewhere like that where it's also cold. <laughs> so you can relate to the idea that your Nutella can get a little cold. Um, but it's not from lack of, it's not from lack of not eating it. 
um, let's, okay, let's add a little more yellow. And yeah, it's very satisfying to mix paint. It feels, it, there's a good feel when a person mixes paint. Now let's go in and make a green by adding a little bit of the black. So we'll add some of the black here and we can make a combo of the blue and the green and the black. You see how that makes kind of a nice neutral green? And let's take a little bit more and we'll make yellow with quite a bit of black. And that can be a, and I may have, let's see if we've got too much black in that or if we need to add a little yellow. Yeah, that's too dark. Now let's go in and add that. And then this can be a nice earthy green. Um, it's wonderful to mix yellow and black together and it can make a really nice kind of an earthy green. Do you see, um, it is like ASMR, yes it is. Um, okay, Denmark. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought you were somewhere in Northern Europe. Um, so Bill and I went to Denmark. Oh gosh, what was that? Um, Bill, can, do you remember what year that was? We went to Denmark and it was, oh, a wonderful trip. We really enjoyed it. Okay, so let's get our palette knife um, wiped off. And the other thing is, is that um, you'll notice that I did not mix my paint using the paintbrush itself. Uh, the reason I use a palette knife for that is because the palette knife, um, really you have a lot of control over where the color is going and very little paint is wasted. If you put your, uh, for example, if you go in and use your brush to mix the paint, you can, and you can do it on a small amount, but what you wanna avoid is you don't wanna get your paint up into this feral area. That's a kind of a, a kiss of death. Oh, and Corvus Avatrosic, that is, um, that's um, my child John is here. Hi, hi John, thank you for joining. And oh, and Alexius, thank you, and um, thank you for stopping by. All right, so let's get a, uh, let's get started on painting this guy here with oil. So I'm gonna start, let's start uh, these brushes. Um, originally this was a uh, a long flat brush and you can see over time it had a lot of love and it just kind of wore down but sometimes these worn, or, worn out brushes are actually uh, for oil are actually maybe the best thing to do is to use is these um, kind of worn out versions so we'll just get a little indication if you just kind of mark where you want the top of your tree and then we're just going to put in a couple little indications so You'll see when this paint goes on with oil and just the, the brush, do you see how it's kind of um, light and uh, kind of fluffy and um, it isn't like, uh, it, it, like when you put the oil or the acrylic on, it just comes on and it looks kind of thick. Um, what you can do is you can dip the paint or dip your brush in the water and you can get a whole different effect by adding just a tiny amount of water. And if you were working with a traditional oil, this is the water mixable oil. If you're working with a traditional oil, um, when you, early June, John, okay, yes, yes, thank you. Um, yeah, so if you, if you are um, working with a traditional oil, let's put in the other side of our trunk, then what happens is uh, you could use instead like turpentine or, uh, thinning medium, that type of thing, to get that effect where you can have a, um, like a washy kind of an effect. All right, and I'm gonna, now because this is a water mixable oil, I can just go ahead and rinse that brush and see the brush comes out nice and clean with just the water mixable oil, super nice, and then I'll wipe off on a paper towel. And let's go in and start indicating a little bit of our tree, again, starting the top of this particular tree, um, it has a top and then it has these, the branches go up and then the branches start going sideways. But I do really enjoy oil because you can kind of just feel this, it almost feels brushy as you put it on. It's really kind of ideal for making trees. It's wet and dark, yeah, this time of year in Denmark, absolutely. It's kind of wet and dark here in Iowa too. 
with this terrible weather that we're having. So I'm going in now with this color where we mixed the uh, little bit of the black and a big puddle of the yellow. And now let's go in and indicate these branches, but it's really the brush is doing, this bristle brush is really doing the work for us here of making it feel kind of like a brushy kind of a feel. All right, now with the darker color, so let's do on the same side now these trees. The one thing that you'll notice about trees when you go out um, on a walk and then you'll see with your trees is that trees um, are like people where their bodies are not really symmetrical. I mean, they are, but they aren't. They've got um, like a tree might have like here's a branch here that might be off. And then we might have a branch over here and that type of thing. So the thing with a tree is you want to not make it look too perfect. So God makes the tree in a perfect way, but it's like perfectly imperfect, where it has its own thing, and this, this tree has had a story in its life, and it, the tree is, has gone in, and it had the wind blowing on it one year, and it had the beaver eating the bottom of the tree the next year, and and all of the stories, kind of like wrinkles on a, on a person, on a human, these, um, all of these things kind of add to the story of what this person is. Oh, our weather in the news, yes. It made national news, our, the crazy weather that's happening. Um, a lot of people ordering things for Christmas and then um, they're going to be delayed because of uh, the truckers can't get the packages through. It's really kind of a kind of a thing. My parents who live in Florida, Dietrich and Helen Schaefer, who are on the chat, um, they're even having cold in Florida. They're having to cover some of their plants that normally wouldn't have to be covered. So let's go in with some purple. And uh, actually, let's go in with the blue. So I'm going to dip the dip my brush in the water to make a light wash of the blue. And let's just show here the, like the shadow side. So let's get some dark indications in here to show that the tree, uh, the dark areas on the tree. And it's really just a matter of just working on it until you feel like you've got enough detail, but not so much that it's overworked. And there's that um, always a fine line of when is it done. I heard somebody say once that um, a painting is done, and I don't know if you guys uh, let me know in the chat if you agree with this, that a painting is done when you feel like it said all that you wanted it to say. That's how you know when your painting or your drawing or your artwork is done. So I'm just taking here and allowing the, um, the brush, the bristles of the brush, to just create a little detail of the feeling of, of sharpness and bristles and cone, pine cones and kind of this brushy feeling that we feel with the tree. These trees, when you go up, um, if you've ever touched a conifer, of course, it's very, um, it doesn't feel soft and nice. <laughs> well, some do, I guess. You can actually get some conifers that feel soft and nice. And they're at the specialty store at the greenhouse and they cost a lot of money because they're like very special in that they that they aren't brushily. But uh, but most landscape conifers are really very uh, rough to touch. Lark. I'm not familiar with a lark conifer. I'm gonna look that up afterwards. That's uh, that's interesting. That's a that's a good point. A lark. So a larch, is it larch or lark? I'm thinking of the larch, the larch tree also, I think is kind of softer. But let's go in with a really dark here. Let's actually just put purple down here because I guess in the tree, sometimes we're gonna have some darker areas. And let's just get a feeling of some dark here, okay. Now we can go in and let's establish the ground. So I'm gonna just rinse the brush out. 
And you can see I've got some purple that's still stuck on here, so we'll just rinse that really, really well. And again, if you're using traditional oils instead of water mixable oils like I am, so thank you, Bill, thank you. Um, if you're using a, um, a uh, traditional oil, then you would wanna go in and use your uh, whatever solvent, or if you're using, some people use just baby oil when they're doing their, put a few indications of foliage, there we go. Uh, but it's, it's just a matter of, there we go, we'll get that rinsed out. Just a matter of really um, getting the brush clean before you, you rinse it. So now, now that we've got our acrylic and our oil, let's now turn our attention over to watercolor. So in my mind, the acrylic and the oil are really pretty similar as far as process goes. And to me, the thing, um, okay, so baby oil or boil. Yeah, that's right, that's right, John, exactly. Okay, oh, larch is the name, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly, and larch are an example. That's a conifer that is not evergreen because I think it drops its needles. I believe it does, and then starts again in the spring. Um, but now that we've done the acrylic and oil, let's now try the watercolor. Try and do a tree in watercolor, and let me grab my watercolors here. So, um, so again with the brushes, so we're going to be using this, and we do appreciate the squirrel that sacrificed for, um, for this brush. This is a squirrel and synthetic blend. But um, I'm just going to use a smaller brush. So let me find my smaller. Here we go. We're going to just use this watercolor brush here and some fresh water. And now for the colors, let's grab some colors. So, so the colors to make a tree and to try and have a tree and have it kind of in similar colors. Here we were using primary yellow, mixing it with some black. But what I'm gonna do for that is I'm gonna use the Holbein leaf green. And that's uh, on our chart over here. That's this guy right here. And I made a chart of my watercolor. So this is what um, this is what it looks like when it's dry. This Holbein leaf green. And then let's also use um, French ultramarine. So this one is Holbein. This one is Winsor and Newton Professionals. Um, so this French ultramarine is a beautiful, very. You see how transparent that color is over here. Um, yeah, the wheel. Okay, Moody. Yeah. All right, so these wheels are amazing. They have, they come with a cover. Let me just show you these things. Uh, my mother got me started on these wheels for watercolor. What you do is you use a tube watercolor and then I make like a little chart. And so this is like the top ring here and here's the bottom ring. And that way when I have to put more color in, I don't have to wonder, okay, what color was it or whatever. So this is the Holbein Permanent Violet, for example. So I know that that goes right in this spot here. For example, right there. I just filled that one actually uh, just the other day. But look at this. This thing has a lid which sits on here. And um, it is just super, uh, super convenient. You just go like this and you lift the lid out and you can choose to um, let your watercolor, as I do, I let them dry and then I'll put the lid on, but you can also store it wet and then it's like for the next few days, it's it's still really, really wet. Oh, um, yeah, Moody, it is in my store. I've got um, my store out on Amazon. Let me show you the link for that. Moody said she's gotten some stuff. I know that Dietrich and Helen Schaefer have gotten stuff out there and other people have as well. If you go to amazon.com slash shop, slash Dina underscore Tollefson. You have to put it in all the way like this. And I'll put the, um, I'll put this link out on my um, description of this video. But, um, but basically, if you go here, really everything that I use, my, the boards, the, the, um, these wheels, all of the different watercolors, my brushes, these new wave palettes, these are for oil. Um, so like over here, 
See, this just peels up very nicely like that. Basically, all the stuff that I use, I've put out on a big list for people to, to go out to on Amazon if they want to find the same materials I'm using. Um, it is like, uh, it's just a super nice list. Okay, and like here's a, like these little porcelain mixing trays, that kind of thing. And Dietrich is saying, okay, so you've had, um, yeah, the Dina store on Amazon, yes. And if you just go to Amazon and type in Dina, it doesn't work that way. You have to actually put the link in this way. Um, the larch on the golf courses, so they are beautiful trees, Daddy. Yeah, yeah. so yours are still green, and they're going to lose the leaves in about a month. Okay, yep, yep. Yeah, and also, um, Zargo, I don't think, I actually don't think it works necessarily outside of the U.S., but what you can do is look at my list and then go pick out the stuff that's there, and then you can get it uh, for yourself locally through whatever stores you normally shop at. Uh, it's just a nice list, a handy-dandy list for people to see, you know, what kind of stuff, easels and uh, canvas, that kind of stuff that I recommend. But yeah, just use it as a guide, absolutely. So these watercolors here, this permanent violet, this is about the closest that I can ever find to, um, to dioxazine purple in either oil or acrylic. And then um, instead of mixing the green using black or neutral tint, I just go ahead and use this, uh, these colors here. I'll show you on here. They look kind of similar, but this one actually has a little bit more blue in, and it's a little bit uh, darker of a color on the paper. And that one is the Hooker's Green, Holbein Hooker's Green. And then this one with a little bit more yellow in it is a Holbein Sap Green. So we're gonna paint our tree here today with just those colors. So let's go ahead and start that now. And um, how I do this is I'll put the tube color. So the tube, this stuff is super duper concentrated. You got list of, you got lost in the green gold list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for the green gold challenge. I had all kinds of green gold stuff on there. I kind of went crazy for it. Um, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. Um, okay, so you'll notice that look at how absolutely crazy thick this color is um, when it comes out of the tube and you just squeeze a tiny amount onto your palette. What's really nice again about these palettes is it keeps all of your colors individual and you don't have any waste. If you want to, for example, mix a color, what I'll do is I'll mix the color by bringing it over from here onto a mixing tray, mix just as much as I need and then apply it and go from there. So now here's the big thing that we need to talk about, about um, painting supports or painting between acrylic oil and watercolor. So this board is a just a, um, a, a canvas board, but it is a canvas board covered in gesso. So um, when you are painting with watercolor, uh, watercolor does not sit nicely on top of gesso. Watercolor uh, really is best if you do something with called like Yupo, which is a, um, and you can do India inks and that type of thing on Yupo, but Yupo does not soak in. And um, I'm actually, I've ordered some Yupo. I'm going to be doing, my next live stream I'm going to do, I'll do an unboxing when those things come. I just ordered it actually this morning. I ordered some Yupo and I ordered some more um, of watercolor paper. But when you're doing watercolor, you're gonna to wanna to use something like a watercolor paper. So this is 140 pound cold press. You can get cold press or hot press. And hot press is gonna have a smoother finish. Cold press has a little bit of texture on it. I happen to like the texture. Or you can do something on a multimedia. You can do watercolor on a multimedia type of, um, like a multimedia card, which, um, which will, it'll soak in, but, um, but you could also do like colored pencil, but you can do acrylic on it. Now, if you're going to do, um, uh, if, you, if you ever wanted to do, for example, oil paint onto watercolor paper, uh, that will not work unless you cover it first with gesso. And gesso is uh, what is the coating on your canvas. So I have a little piece of canvas here. Let me grab this. This is what canvas looks like. 
This is the back side of your canvas, and you might recognize it, actually, if you look closely at it, it just looks like fabric you might wear. But if you look at the front side of canvas, this is canvas that I buy by the roll. Um, uh, the front side of the canvas has got like this white coating on it. And what this white coating in is that's called gesso, G-E-S-S-O. So what the gesso does, and that's the coating that's also on here, and if you buy, uh, for example, stretched canvas, it's canvas, and then um, you apply gesso on it. If you've ever stretched your own canvas, what that process is is you take uh, can like uh, canvas duck is the weave, and then you get it around your stretcher bars, and then you come in and you paint on top of that layer after layer of, of gesso, and then that tightens up your um, canvas and it makes it ready so it will accept either oil or acrylic. Um, but again, that doesn't work for watercolor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna paint on here and I'm gonna paint this using watercolor paper because I, um, I'm, now there is something that is a new product that's out there and it's called a watercolor board. And a watercolor board um, is specially treated and it can be used for watercolors or a multimedia board. You can use something like that. But um, what, what happens is, is if you try and do, let me get up, I'm just gonna, just to make this flat, I'm gonna get a, another board under here. So my little masonite board sits here nice and flat. So what this is, is this is um, a little masonite board the ground, exactly, yes, Margo, thank you. So this watercolor, whoops. You know what, this thing is sitting, this um, thing is sitting up a little tall. Let me just get this right here, okay. So we'll get it so it lines up. All right, so the our watercolor, um, this is a cotton, 140 um, pound cotton watercolor paper. And the reason I've put tape on it is because when water goes into the paper, how you make paper is you take pulp and add water, and then you press it down or steam it down or do something like that, and it will then lay flat. So when we add water on and do our watercolor, it's gonna make it all lumpy. And by putting the, um, this tape, and I'm using a, a um, Pro Premium pH Neutral Masking Tape, then, um, then, you, then it will, um, hold down in place for you. And um, let's see, and I'm gonna check the chat here. Let's see. Oh, yeah, and that's the other, uh, very good point about the watercolor brushes, um, Zargo, is that um, if you go and you take your watercolor brushes tend to be very expensive. So um, these bristle brushes are inexpensive for oil. A lot of the Taclon, these brushes tend to be inexpensive as, as well, but these watercolor brushes are very expensive and you wanna like be gentle with them. So that's important. Okay, so now that we've talked a little bit about why we would do watercolor paper or something specially, a multimedia kind of paper and not use just a, a regular canvas gesso board for watercolor, um, let's talk a little bit about how, how watery watercolor is. So the other paint, our acrylic and our oil paint, super viscous, super thick, and we can apply it with a hard brush. Um, with watercolor, you want to apply it with just a whisper soft brush. All right, so, um, oh, you're back, Elf. Hey, thank you for coming back. Elf, you are so nice. Um, I'm just gonna dip this in the water. And also the other thing too about watercolor painting is it's really about um, controlling. And if you ever, if you guys ever have subscribed to Erica uh, Lancaster, she does a fantastic job talking about water, um, water control with watercolor. She's a really great watercolorist. Um, but uh, Erica, and Erica, if you're watching later, hello. And, um, and I recommend people check out some of Erica's um, content for watercolor control. But let's go in and let's, uh, let's start with our uh, colors here. So we've got, again, we've got these colors that we're gonna be using, the sap green, we've got the ultramarine blue, 
We've got the permanent violet. We've got the hooker's green, and then we've got that kind of just wonderful leaf green. So if I just set these over off to the side here, let's start a little bit with our leaf green. So I'm just gonna go in here and touch into the wet paint, get some of it on my brush, and then I'm gonna just tip a little bit of the extra water off onto the, well, if you can see, see with the, and we're just gonna just take a little of that extra off, and let's just start in and start to draw our tree. And then, um, actually, you know what we should do, let me rinse this here first, is let's establish our, um, let's establish our stem. So for our stem, let's use, let's make a purple stem, just because we can. And we don't wanna be constrained by the color that we actually think that the tree is. If you put the color in of how you feel about the tree, then now, you know what I just did, what I, what I said not to do, <laughs> is I, um, there we go, is I put the color on before dabbing it off on the, on the paper. So there we go, getting the excess off on the paper. So let's get some purple going here. Rinsing off the brush, and now I'm wiping the brush off so I don't add extra water into the paint. And let's go back over to our, this wonderful leaf green. We'll take it, just take it, uh, wipe off the extra. And we're just allowing and holding the angle, holding the brush at a low angle. Rinse that off. Yeah, Davy is here, yes, yeah. And Davy, are you gonna have a biscuit today? It's like, I think it's probably, what time is it near you? It's probably dinner time by you now, I guess, because you're over in England. All right, let's get a little bit of, um, now also the green, we're gonna make the, the light side of the trunk. And just while that purple is still wet, if you mix yellow and purple together, you make a neutral color. And so you see, we can kind of make the bark of our tree by doing, and I'm gonna wipe that off, go back with a little bit more of our purple. So we're gonna dip into the purple, touch, and then, um, I'll just hold this here, and then touch with the paper towel. Let's get that rinsed off. And then now let's go in and do some of our greens. So let's start with the, um, this is the hooker's green. Let's start with the sap green, taking the brush and mixing some of that up. We uh, dab off the extra water. And let's just allow that green, the greens to kind of intermix. Let's get a little bit more dab off. And the top of the tree has got, the stuff is, is up and energetic at the top of the tree, but then it starts to go, the leaves and the limbs go down as we go down the tree. Let's rinse that out. And now let's come in with some of that hooker's green. So the hooker's green is more blue, so we should use, as we're going from light to dark, or the light, light area of the tree and moving over to the shadow, we're gonna go more and more blue and into purples. So let's go here to show the dark side of the tree here. And again, the brush is being held at a low angle. And we want to not necessarily make all of our branches the same. Let's have uh, down at the bottom of the tree, it's the branches are more in shadow. And then let's go in back with some of our 
hooker screen and we'll tap off the top and just get a couple indications of this idea that the tree has got, it's not smooth, it's kind of spiky and it has its little, little spikiness. And we'll do that, okay, and then we can go in. And I think one of the beauties of watercolor that you can get with watercolor that you can't as easily get, you can, but you can't as easily get with acrylic or with oil, is the sense of lightness and freshness that watercolor has if you like this, um, the paint, the way it sits on the paper, it's very um, like fresh and light and these have more of a heavy substantial feel. So depending on what you're painting, that may or may not be a good thing, but, uh, but that is an attribute of watercolor. Um, so let's now take some of our ultramarine blue, just dipping into that and taking off the excess. And let's go in and really darken some of these passages here. So up on the shadow side of the tree, and we can come back with the hookers or with the uh, leaf green. And if we want some blending, go ahead and allow these to kind of mix and blend. So again, when you make your own trees. You'll make decisions on what kind of colors you want to incorporate or not incorporate. And again, because I like to go crazy on colors, I'm going to be putting in. So the watercolors are fun. Yes, I totally agree. Okay, yeah, in the UK with minus five, I tell you, Davey, it is cold, cold, cold here. Cold, cold, cold. All right, so we'll get a dark, a dark, area because we want enough contrast between the light area of the tree and then the dark part of the tree. And get some of these little spiky feels going. All right, and then let's go to the base of our tree and just come in, we'll just come in, we'll just rinse out the brush, lightly dab it, and then come in and establish an area under the tree, so where the land is sitting. A little shadow and make a couple little spiky indications for some foliage. And you can see I got a little boo-boo over here, so I'm gonna take some fresh water. I wanna, I got some green where I didn't want it. I'll show you how to take that off. It's really easy to lift that off. I'm gonna take the, the brush and just go over and there you go. Then it can come off. So I can see on my tree and my tree's a little bit kind of, it's, it, it's lopsided, but it's more lopsided than it needs to be. Maybe there's a strong wind. <laughs> Let's come over here. Let's add a branch over here just to kind of compensate because I feel like we've got some we're a little bit lopsided with our branches. There we go. Okay. All right. And in order to make him a little darker, let's add a little bit of our of our uh, of our blue onto this side. Just allow those colors to mix. That's I think a lot of fun with watercolor. One thing you'll also notice too is that. Uh, oils, what's really a pleasure about working about oil is that the color that you put down is the color it will stay when it dries, it stays identical. When you do acrylics, some acrylics, depending on the brand and also some individual colors, the darker colors tend to lighten very slightly as they dry. But watercolor is at an extreme where watercolor is always much, much lighter as it dries. So, um, so the nice thing about watercolors, you can always come back and or really any of these, you can always come back and layer on more stuff. If you layer more color on with watercolor, it makes it darker. 
if you layer more of the same color on with either acrylic or oil, it really, unless it was a light wash, it really doesn't change the, how dark it is. But, um, but that's not true of watercolor. You can create really dark effects by just layering you know, more on. Oh, there's the phone. There's the phone. All right, there, I just, I just hung it up. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, I wanna thank you guys, and I hope if you haven't already subscribed to my channel that you will subscribe and come back again. And I really appreciate that you guys are here. And, and if you were on the chat and I wasn't, I wasn't interacting with you, it wasn't that I was trying to ignore you, it was just that I was, I was distracted for the moment. And so I, I value every one of you, and I'm so glad that you were here. So uh, be sure to come back again. And then watch as, um, and then uh, watch the next live that I'll be doing here uh, when those new art supplies come and we've got the UPO paper and we can compare UPO paper against standard watercolor paper. All right, you guys, well, thank you so much. And until next time, it's Dina Tollefson and all my best to you. Bye-bye.